I was asked to record a video on how to submit a project proposal. As you see, we start on the official web page of the European Commission dedicated to the call. The web page, as you see, is called Funding and Tender Opportunities. You need to find the web page of the call. That's the first step. And the second step is to either register or log in yourself. In some of my previous videos, I already explained why it is important to register yourself because this will help you to easify any step when it comes to interactions with European Commission. So let's have a look how our interface will change after you register yourself or log in yourself to the web page. As you see, I have logged myself into the system and the interface changed a bit. At the moment, we are not interested in all the offers in this blue area. It is enough to be in the section, my proposals, because at the moment we have no grants and hopefully your personal profile is already filled in. So how to go further? Number one, we need to scroll entirely down and you see at the bottom of the page you have to choose whether you are going to apply for European fellowship or global fellowship. By now you should know the difference between these two. If you don't feel free to ask questions but it could be a bit of problem if you don't know what they are about. So I'm choosing European fellowship because I would like to go for example to Holland. Now I click on the button start my submission. So what do they tell me? Well, obviously they warn me that I can't change the type of my choice after this step. So be careful what you are choosing. If you choose the wrong option you will have to open the whole uh, proposal from the scratch. I confirm my choice because I know what I wanted to submit. And as you see, we get to the part where we need to connect you as an individual with your host institution. You do it in this section by using so-called PIC number. This is a kind of unique identification number that was given to every institution that has participated in any European research collaboration project. So this is PIC number. If you don't have it, well, your host institution should give it to you. But if you don't have it, you can try to search by a short name of your institution. It works really well as well. Well, I'm not going to test it because I know it works and I don't want to waste your time. But I agreed with my friends that I can use one of uh, my uh, collaborations with my previous clients to test this mock-up submission on. So I'm going to use uh, the institution I worked, I collaborated before with. And as you see, there is the PIC code here. But because there was already previous collaboration, I already have this company connected with my profile. So it's really easy now to add all the detail. Once I have selected my potential partner, I give them search. Okay, they found it. And now I say, okay, use this institution as my host institution. Well, once I do this, they ask me, what is my role in setting this proposal? So I said, I'm not, I say, I'm not a supervisor. I'm going to be a researcher. In this step, you see that uh, the proposal could be opened both by a researcher or supervisor or even some person from a project support department who is responsible for this type of project. But in our case, we are opening the project proposal as a researcher. So I'm choosing this option. Now I'm asked to fill in the acronym of my project. So I'm going to call my project just a test. 
uh, well, you write short summary, and as you see, all these parts are obligatory. So if you don't fill them in, you can't go to the next step. Be careful. Uh, you can change the summary. I think you can change the scientific panel later, but it will be quite problematic to change the acronym. I know that I always struggled with this one. Um, it doesn't have to be entirely the same acronym as the one you have in the headings of your proposal. You might change this slightly, but be really careful and try to use the same acronym as you will use in your project proposal. And let's choose the scientific panel. I plan to submit a project proposal that would be the best to submit to social sciences and humanities. Again, be careful with this choice because um, it is uh, just like choosing the audience for your project. You need to find the audience that is relevant, that knows about your topic and that is able to judge whether your project is good or bad. So therefore you select people who know something about your area. Once you choose this, you just click save and go to the next step. Again, um, they warn you that uh, the organization you chose as, as your project partner, as the host institution will be informed about this step. This is quite important as well. And now again, a typical kind of agreement. If you don't agree with this, sorry, you got, can't go further anyway. And I'm going to continue with this proposal. What are the next steps? At first, you have to check all the administrative information. Good thing about this system is that the part A that includes all the administrative data is already kind of pre-filled for you, but there are certainly some information missing and this missing information is always related to your project, to your specific project. As you see, if you have some kind of associated partner, so if you plan some short stay or any kind of other collaboration, uh, you can add partner here as well. But if you are happy with uh, the selection you have made so far, you can just save and go to the next step. Uh, we are not going to define the supervisor at the moment uh, because we are just kind of playing with submission. You can do it yourself, so don't forget to do it. As you see, they navigate you quite a lot. And in this step, they tell you, you should fill in or check or edit all the administrative forms. So how does it look like? You go to the edit forms. And as you see, we are again redirected to a slightly different environment. It will look a bit like PDF file. So you just go to the table of contents and you see what kind of information needs to be added. The general information is already uh, pre-filled in. The participants, that's the section you should focus on. The same with the budget, ethics and security and other questions. These are four sections that will be specific for your project and won't be pre-filled and therefore need your attention or attention of any kind of support staff that is going to help you with your proposal. Uh, while filling in this form, I would warn you that sometimes you might face technical problems when trying to save it. When it doesn't work, when you can't save it, just try different uh, internet browser. I experience this situation quite frequently and not certain, but I think we had least problems with Internet Explorer. But, you know, everything might change. But whenever some kind of these PDF looking like forms do not work, try to uh, just change the browser and it solves problems quite frequently. So whenever I make change, I have to save and exit form. And then I am going to return to the original interface where I can add additional details. Let's suppose 
we have already filled in all the information in my part A of the proposal, which are administrative forms. It is important because if anything is missing, you won't be able to submit your proposal. You will see later when I will try to submit this mock-up pro uh, proposal. It's not filled in completely, so therefore I can't submit it. Once you have your part A forms ready and you finished your project proposal, part B1 and B2, you upload them here in this section. Again, small warning, be careful to use up-to-date templates. They really want you to use the templates that are relevant to 2023 call. If you don't use them, it might be a problem for your project evaluation. So be careful with choosing proper templates, which are available in this section, and you can download them here as well. Once you have them ready, it will look like this. I prepared my part B1 document, and it has 13 pages. I did this on purpose. Now you can see what happens if your project proposal exceeds the limit of 10 pages. They give you warning and they strongly recommend you to adjust your project. Uh, you probably heard in some of my previous videos that you should be really careful with those 10 pages. Don't try to fill every tiny little space because it will then be really difficult to read and you kind of will play against your evaluation. So work with 10 pages and do a lot of editing in order to get a good product. So now I know what I'm doing. So I'm closing this warning and you see my part B is uploaded even though it is it is 13 pages long. What they will do with such documents, they will simply disregard whatever is after the page 10. So don't do it. Don't upload longer documents. Part B is about your CV and any other additional documents that you should provide for this proposal. Well, we can try Part B too as well. And as you will see, even though this document has 13 pages as well, there will be no problem whatsoever with uploading this one. Now, when both my, my documents are uploaded, I checked my administrative forms for being filled in. I have to validate the whole project and they will tell you what kind of mistakes you still have in your proposal. So when I'm validating, you see that I got many kind of feedbacks on missing data in part A form. And you have also another eligibility warning related to the fact that my B1 form is too long. At the moment, I simply can't submit this project proposal, so I can try. But anyway, they will tell me there are too many errors and you can't, uh, and you can't submit at the moment. Well, once you solve all the errors and everything will work smoothly, you can submit. And the suggestion is do submit before the deadline because you can always reopen already submitted proposal and update your part B1 or part B2 as you need it. This is something that is always recommended uh, by the end of the deadline, the systems will be overloaded and you might face some difficulties. Therefore, it is always good to try the submission before the deadline just to see if it works, what kind of mistakes you still have in the system and to be more relaxed when the 13th of September will come, which is the actual deadline after which you can't submit anymore. Submitting already in August and opening the submitted project proposal is always the best strategy to follow. Well, I think 
this is all for now. I hope this helped. I tried to speak as slow as possible, not to speak too much in order really to navigate you in the system. So if there are still some questions, feel free to ask anything in comments. And if you have more questions about the proposal, feel free to ask. I will try to record anything that would help because we still have more than a month before the deadline. So thank you again for your kind attention and hopefully it helped a bit. Bye.